Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Class Acts 16, 17, and 18 is where we are today. We have been with the Apostle Paul on one missionary journey that launched from Antioch, a great deal of good done. In Acts 16, we are with him on a second missionary journey that began in Antioch. Acts 16 takes us right over here to the area of Derby and Lystra, where we are introduced to a young man named Timothy. Acts 16, verse 1, Timothy was a disciple. He was the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. Young Timothy had a good reputation in this area, and Paul is anxious to take that young man with him. Luke tracks with us all the way over here to Troas. He tells us that Paul would have liked to have done more work in this area, but for some reason, the Spirit of God prohibited him, leading him over here to Troas. Now, for you and me, this may be just a map, but Think about where we are in the world. Everything in this area is Asia, right? Over there, that is Europe. And the gospel had not been carried that far. All the way over into another continent is the way that we describe it. But while Paul and his companions are there in Troas, look at verse 9. A vision appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia, a region over here in what we would call Europe, urging Paul and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. The first stop on European soil was in Philippi. You can see there in Acts 16, verses 13 and 14, Luke was there. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together One who heard us was a woman named Lydia. Lydia listens. The Lord opens her heart and Lydia listens. And she and her household are baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. But while Paul is there in Philippi, look at verse 16. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. This is a, a slave girl being used by powerful people. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And Luke tells us, This she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And that unclean spirit came out that very hour. But it's not hard for us to imagine how the people who were using that slave girl wouldn't be happy when they found that their hope of gain was gone. And so they seize Paul and Silas and drag them into the marketplace before the rulers. Eventually, they are put in prison. But it is there that night in Philippi that a jailer hears Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns to God. There is a great earthquake. You can read much more about it from Acts 16 as a class. Eventually, that man falls to his knees and he wants to know, what must I do to be saved? He also, along with members of his household, is baptized for the forgiveness of his sins. 
But there are people in Philippi determined to oppose Paul and this message. And so Luke tells us how they made their way from Philippi over here to Thessalonica. Paul starts in a synagogue of the Jews. He reasons with them over the course of three Sabbath days. But there are Jews who are once again jealous of this reception. And so Paul and Silas and others are are driven out of Thessalonica. You can read about people over here in Berea who are described as more noble in that they are eager to hear. They're examining the scriptures every day to see if what they are hearing from Paul and Silas is actually true. Eventually, Luke follows Paul all the way down here to Athens. And I want you to see in your Bibles, Acts chapter 17, verse 16, while Paul was waiting for his companions at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. In Acts 17, he's got the opportunity to stand right in the middle of it all, where different poets and philosophers and educated people consistently gather. Could I just give you a few bullet points of his powerful sermon right here in Athens from Acts 17? He says, men of Athens, you are very religious. They had idols everywhere he looked, but I proclaim to you the unknown God who made everything, including every nation, from one man. That God, the maker of it all, desires to be found by all of us. And he's not far from any of us. But he is not a lifeless idol. And he has overlooked times of ignorance, but now He commands everyone everywhere to repent, to turn towards him. He has fixed a day on which he will judge the world by a man he raised from the dead. Some are intrigued. They want to hear more. Others mock the very idea. But Paul makes his way from Athens over here to Corinth. He'll stay in Corinth, we're told, for a year and six months. It's while he's in Corinth that he meets Priscilla and Aquila, a couple, husband and wife, believers, who we will hear much more about as Acts unfolds. But as you can see, Paul eventually makes his way back over here, ending up in Antioch where... He almost immediately begins a third missionary journey that we'll dig into together soon. For now, Acts 16, 17, and 18. Luke has given us a lot to study. Let's dig in together. Appreciate you being in class. Have a great rest of it and a great start to this new week. 